Good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started singing. We're going to, we turn to A Light at the River. It's uh, number 495 and 533. 495 and 533 in the 12th edition. <clears throat> there is a river we must pass over when life's sun goes to sleep in the west. There'll be a light for me at the crossing, guiding me to my home of sweet rest. There'll be a light for me at the river, guiding my soul across the dark foam. Down through the valley, as the dark shadow, Jesus my light will carry me home. Soon I shall reach the brink of the That's enough for me. It's uh, 496 and 532, I believe. 532. 496 and 532. I know not what God has in store for me within His plan. Because I know my life is in His hand. I know not what tomorrow brings, sadness or blue skies. But I am sure I will not step beyond my Father's Two. But every day I 
in both hymnals. Number 500. <clears throat>
fill my heart. Then I shall bow in the boat request to sing Sweetly Resting. I believe that's number 69 in the 11th edition and it's number 66 in the 12th edition. 69 and 66. <clears throat> In the red rock I pressed in sickly sheltered I abide. In the foes or songs molest me, while within the cliff I climb. Now I'm resting, sweetly resting, in the cliff once made for Jesus blessed rock of ages, I will hide myself in thee. Long pursued by sin and Satan, weary sad I long for rest. Then I found this heavenly shelter. Thank you very much, Brother Kevin. The Cheney's, we're thankful uh, for the song service that we're able to worship in, uh, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our Wednesday night service. We hope and trust that 
each one has taken part in prayer. Uh, ask the Lord's blessing upon our meeting, that he would just abundantly bless us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit as we come and worship. We hope and trust in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we certainly have something to glory in, uh, and that's not me or anyone else that's gathered here, but, well, not anyone else on this screen is gathered here. And we hope the Lord is gathered with us this evening. And that's who we have to glory in and boast in and um, just to uh, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So uh, welcome this Wednesday evening. I hope and trust that uh, everyone this weekend was lifted up in the spirit uh, as you went and uh, enjoyed your worship service at your local assembly. Uh, that you just you just felt the presence of the Lord with you in that meeting. Um, you know, as we're localized in a building, I reckon we take for granted that the Spirit's got the power to be right there in that and move us, everybody that's together. But you know, we're kind of spread out this evening. Uh, but you know, the Spirit is uh, the Spirit has no bound. Uh, he can uh, He can lift us up, and we can all rejoice just like if we were sitting next to each other on a pew. Uh, in the back row, wherever you're uh, wanting to uh, meet. But uh, that's the power of the Spirit uh, that we can feel as if we are together. I know that this is no substitute for in live person, but I sure am thankful for it. And uh, I'm glad that we're having it. And I'm glad that you're with us tonight. So praise God for that. Uh, the Lord's, uh, you know, we see all the time how God is really in control. And, uh, you know, we, I think at this time of the year, we may anticipate certain degrees of temperature and things of that nature, but, you know, the Lord wants to remind us every once in a while that even though we expect 60 degrees in the morning, he can dial it right back to 45 if that's his desire. Uh, he can bring the rain, he can bring the sun, he can bring the cold, he can bring the heat. Uh, he, he is, he is, uh, he's God. God is God. And, uh, we're uh, we're thankful for the weather, whatever it may be. Um, so uh, we would uh, like to um, welcome our ministers with us tonight. Elder Miller's good to see him. Uh, Elder Oots, uh, I think that's what I see. And uh, so we're thankful for their uh, ministry and uh, support and uh, being with us tonight. But we would like to go to the Lord in prayer here, and we want to try and remember several. Uh, I got some uh, sad news this evening from Brother Jean, Karen Smith, and uh, her son Bailey both have COVID again, so uh, we want to remember them. She had uh, just been through such a hard uh, sickness with that COVID for many, many, many months and has really didn't fully recover, but we hope and trust that the Lord would strengthen her uh, and her son Bailey and that the Lord would bless, so we want to remember them in prayer as well as Donna Burris, we continue to keep her in prayer. Uh, we pray the Lord's blessing upon them. Uh, it's good to see Brother Ned with us. We want to remember Brother Ned as well as Jeanette. We pray the Lord's blessing upon both of them. Um, Madeline DeCauley, we were reminded of her uh, sickness uh, this past weekend at um, Liberty Hill. So we want to lift her up in prayer as well as that family. Uh, Sister Casey and her upcoming delivery. Uh, getting closer and closer. So we pray the Lord's continued blessing with her and her family. We just pray the Lord's watch care over them. Uh, Brother Gene and Sister Wanda, her son, Dwayne, Sister Jewel, Sister Virginia, Sister Ruth, her brother, Robert. We pray the Lord's blessing upon them as well as uh, Clyde Pickler and um, Teresa Long. We pray the Lord's uh, blessing uh, Andrew May, our disabled veteran friend, we just pray the Lord's blessing upon him. I think he's due home in the next week or so to North Carolina. Uh, so we uh, hope all would go well with that and uh, uh, their family as they be, uh, get to be reunited, uh, his uh, recovery and uh, has gone well from all reports. So praise God, praise God for that. Um, a few from No Creek, uh, Brother Steve Bailey had cataract surgery this past week and uh, is doing well. So thank the Lord for that. Uh, Brother Bob Hooven had surgery on Tuesday morning. Same, things seemed to have been going well, but um, there were some issues and uh, talked to uh, his wife, Sister Elaine, tonight, and she said that they were taking him back into surgery this evening. 
Uh, so we hope all would be well uh, with him. He's having some prostate issues. So uh, we just pray the Lord would bless. He's been in a lot of pain. So um, pray, pray the Lord would be with him in this surgery and that, uh, you know, everything could be taken care of. Sister Mary Catherine and Sister Carol, uh, the Duns and the Eatons, Sister Merlin, uh, Sister Bennett and Sister Lib, uh, Sister Angie Hendricks. So uh, she was with us last week at uh, No Creek and uh, walking pretty good on that healing broken leg of hers. So uh, things seem to be going in the right direction at this point in time. So thank God for that. Uh, Elder Oots, good to see him with us. Like I said earlier, we continue to be in prayer for his situation. We just pray the Lord's continued blessing upon him. Uh, sister, uh, sister Linda Everett's friend, Katie, uh, she is seeing a, a doctor about her high risk pregnancy. Uh, and we got a report, her last sonogram, uh, the baby has a small hole in the heart. So we want to uh, remember that family. We pray the Lord's blessing upon them. Uh, sister Gail Thompson, uh, she's not with us tonight. She had some uh, medical procedure today and her grandson, Marcus, has COVID. We want to remember both of them in prayer. Um, we have, uh, of course, we want to remember the country in which we live. Uh, we pray the Lord's continued blessing upon the United States of America. Uh, ask the Lord uh, to uh, uh, strengthen us uh, as individual citizens, strengthen us in the kingdom. You know, our citizenship, we consider ourselves to be citizens of the United States of America, and we are in the respect that we live here in the flesh, uh, but we have a greater citizenship, and that's in the kingdom, that's in the glory, uh, the kingdom of glory, uh, and that's uh, who we look up towards, who we wait for the appearing of the great God of mercy uh, to descend and to collect his kingdom and bring him home. Uh, that's where our true citizenship is, I believe. Uh, and that's where our body and spirit and soul will uh, reside one glorious day, dearly beloved. Um, uh, a few other things I'd like to uh, see. We want to remember our military, be thankful for them, uh, be thankful for our first responders, pray the Lord's continued blessing upon them. Uh, we have several meetings uh, that's upcoming with No Creek and Meta Creek we want to uh, be in prayer for. Uh, Lord willing, uh, Meadow Creek will be hosting in the fall the uh, Bear Creek Association meeting. We ask the Lord's blessing and strength and wisdom, leadership and guidance and all of that. Um, June 5th, Meadow Creek will be in communion. Third and fourth, uh, seven o'clock, that's Friday and Saturday. Elder E.W. Hooven, Lord willing, will be with the church there at Meadow Creek. So we pray the Lord's blessing upon that meeting um, in May. The fifth Sunday, Meadow Creek will be meeting in the morning on that Sunday. The Saturday before that fifth Sunday, Lord willing, Elder Heath Williams will be with us at Meadow Creek. Uh, that meeting beginning at seven. Um, on May the 22nd, that's the fourth Sunday in May at No Creek, Lord willing, will be in our communion service. Elder Joe Miller's Lord willing, will be with us. And we pray the Lord's blessing in there in that meeting. Uh, we want to uh, remember those and uh, other meetings that's uh, upcoming. Uh, this next Sunday meeting is, uh, we anticipate a, a wonderful meeting there. It's a special meeting. Uh, so we want to be in prayer for that. Um, let's see, is there anyone else we'd like to call out before we go to the Lord in prayer? Brother Eddie. Yes, sir. My daughter has a, a student in her class that was involved in an accident. Her, the student and her, his mom and two two brother, uh, two other family members. Um, they were all in, they're in all life in life threatening kind of condition uh, from the accident. And uh, the car that ran into him was the driver of that car was instantly killed. So it was a real tragic event. But um, her entire class, of course, is affected by that. So please just keep all of them in your prayers and all that are affected by that. It's the Shelton family. It's a mom and, and three kids, a, fr a first grader, a fifth grader, and a middle schooler, So and a mom. So they're all, they're all in pretty rough shape. And uh, also we had a little sister that has a, a cousin that uh, had twins, 21-year-old uh, twins that were involved in a boating accident and, and tragically, 
drowned. Both both twins drowned, and uh, we heard that last uh, Sunday. So uh, that's Sister Jackie Leggett's uh, cousin. So just keep that family in your prayers too. All right, Brother Gary, we want to remember Brother Gary's daughter as well as the Shelton family and uh, Jackie Leggett's cousins, uh, Sister Jackie and uh, the cousins' families that uh, were in that tragic uh, boating accident, fatal boating accident where both twins uh, lost their life. So uh, we want to remember that, that family. Uh, we know we need it. We stand in need of a great God and we have a great God. We pray that God of all comfort would comfort them as only God has the power to do. And I'm thankful that he does have the power to do it. And I'm thankful that he, he teaches us to come to his throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need. And we stand in time of need constantly, continually. Is there anyone else? Okay, no one else being mentioned. We'd like to uh, have a hymn as a way of opening. We're going to ask Elder Miller to have prayer for us and Elder Oost preach for us this evening. Uh, so, um, we'll be in prayer for that as well. Brother Kevin, what number do you have? Brother Eddie, we've turned to, um, bless Jesus while in mortal flesh. It's number 300. And then the 12th edition is 288, 300 and 288. Bless Jesus well in mortal flesh, and both my friend Good to see you tonight. We are uh, thankful for you. We pray the Lord. We're looking forward to your upcoming visit, Lord willing, and in prayer for it. We just hope the Lord would bless you in prayer here. Uh, thankful to be with you tonight. Bow with me as we try to pray, please. Almighty God, and Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight uh, in the name of our great Savior, and our great intercessor and our great high priest over the house of God. We thank you, Lord, for these hymns of praise that have been sung this evening. We thank you, Lord, for all the countless blessings of life that you bestow upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us another opportunity to gather here tonight in thy holy name. And we thank you, Lord, that we wouldn't know a thing about you and we'd have no desire to worship you in spirit and in truth. And uh, we would have no uh, desire to call upon thy name, Lord, if you hadn't visited us uh, when we were dead and trespasses and sins and quickened us and made us alive and uh, gave us 
uh, peace and joy and comfort here in this life. We thank you, Lord, for that great blessing. We thank you, Lord, for the precious word uh, that you preserve for us that we can look to uh, and, and stand upon as the truth. We thank you for all that are gathered here tonight, uh, every family, Lord, every home and every church that's represented. We thank you, Lord, that you are a personal God with each one of thy children, and we can each one come before you individually in thy name and, and have confidence that uh, through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that our prayers can be heard. We want to remember these many, many requests that have been made tonight. We want to remember this one, Lord, that we can see on the screen that uh, will soon be delivering a child into this world. And I pray uh, that you watch over her, and I pray that you give her a safe delivery uh, and a healthy child. And I pray, Lord, for this family uh, that's been in this car accident, this mother and these children. I pray, if it be thy will, Lord, you lay your hand upon each one of them, uh, and e that each one of them, Lord, would survive and recover from this. And we want to remember this family that suffered this tragic drowning. I pray, Lord, that you give comfort according to thy will. I pray for my brother tonight as he would come before us. Uh, Lord, we know uh, how he feels, and he's told us, and we've told him. And we know, Lord, that without thee, we can do nothing. And I pray tonight you'd overshadow him by thy spirit and enable him to preach uh, the very message that needs to be sent forth to feed this little flock. And we want to remember this nation, Lord, that we've been blessed to live in and blessed to have a free life in this nation. Pray for those in authority over us. We pray especially, Lord, for thy people here in this nation, that uh, they would take heed, and that we take heed, Lord, uh, and seek thee and repent and uh, turn from our wicked ways uh, and uh, submit all uh, under thy hands and trust in thee. Protect, Lord, those uh, in the military service, and those, Lord, uh, uh, in the police forces around this nation. Uh, watch over and protect them, I pray, as they protect us. Forgive us, Lord, our sins and failures in all the many ways in which we fall short. But again, as I close, Lord, I just want to thank you uh, for every countless blessing that you bestowed upon us and pray in this meeting tonight that thy name would be lifted up and glorified. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen, Elder Miller. Miller, we're thankful for that prayer. Uh, Elder, it's good to see you this evening. We pray the Lord's uh, supreme blessings upon you. God bless you. It's wonderful being here. I do need your prayers. Appreciate so much the good song service and the sweet prayer, Brother Joe. I just ask each of you to continue to pray for me as I would come before you this, this evening. Uh, I thought, Brother Eddie's words were so appropriate about what a blessing it is for us to gather in this capacity. Uh, it's not an in-person meeting, but it sure has been a blessing for me uh, on Wednesday nights to be able to gather like we have. And I felt the Lord's spirit in these meetings, and that's a great confirmation for me that we're doing something I believe that's pleasing to the Lord as we uh, gather even in our homes and come together for the purpose of worshiping the Lord and uh, to have fellowship with one another, but more importantly, to have fellowship with God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And truly, if we have fellowship, that's who we have fellowship in and with. And what a blessing that is to stop midweek and be able to come to this time and if I would lose this um, ability, I, I'll tell you, I would surely, surely miss it. And uh, just thank the Lord for uh, this service and for all that are involved in allowing us to have it, just to sing together and look to the Lord together and worship together. And um, I need your prayers tonight. And uh, I believe you're praying for me. I believe you love me. And uh, whether I'm blessed to uh, preach or not, I believe you'll still love me, and you'll still pray for me, but I really want to preach uh, if it's the, to the honor and to the praise and the glory of the Lord, 
uh, but I'm dependent, as we know we all are, upon the blessings of the Lord to enable us to be able to share the truth. But all truth we have to share. What a, what a wonderful message we have in the gospel. If I have a text tonight, I'd like to read it in your hearing. It's found in 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'd like to begin right at verse 1 and read down through about verse 11. If you have your Bibles and like to turn with me, I certainly encourage you to do that. Here we have the writings of the Apostle Paul to the young preacher Timothy. He says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy. My dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly designed to see thee being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and in thy, and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the, by the putting on of my hands. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ who hath brought abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. The apostle Paul here was acting by the leadership of the spirit, writing to this young preacher and by inspiration of God to each of us tonight. We're blessed to read this portion of God's word, which is part of all scripture that is given to us for our, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, given to the man of God that we might be complete, truly furnished unto all good works. And here the apostle Paul in this wonderful letter written to young Timothy mentions uh, the sweet fellowship that he'd also felt and had uh, with his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice, and that same like precious faith he believed was in Timothy also. What a blessing tonight to be able to approach you and uh, gather together as brethren of like precious faith, believing that the Lord is the one who has done a work of grace in our hearts, that without his work, as Brother Joe prayed, without the Lord, first moving in our lives, we'd have never called upon him or had any hunger or thirst or the desire for any of these things that we're enjoying so much when we sing the wonderful truth of salvation by grace or when we are able to talk about it and share it again with the Lord's people. Uh, we would have no mind to desire it. We'd have no hunger for it. We'd not understand anything about it. As a matter of fact, we'd be just the opposite of that. We, we, would, we would not only just be neutral about this, but we just see this meeting as a total, complete waste of time and no, of no benefit to us. And I don't believe any of us feel about that uh, that way tonight. And if that's the way that you feel, then there's an evidence that the same grace that was given to the Apostle Paul, that was given to uh, his grandmother Lois, and that was shown unto his mother Eunice, and that he was persuaded in him is also in us. By God's grace, we've been brought out of a state of death and sin to a state of life in Christ. We have been given an understanding of these wonderful truths and uh, been able to rejoice in them. And tonight, 
we're gathered to talk about the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ one more time. And he says, he was greatly designed to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I might be filled with joy. And he recognized what a blessing it was for God's little children to dwell together in a place of worship, in a place of where we can gather together. Brother Eddie mentioned earlier about the wonderful blessings we've had uh, this weekend of gathering in in-person meetings. And oh, what a blessing it is when brethren can come together and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, at once they sing, the hymn writer said, and at once they pray, and they hear of heaven, and they learn the way. And, they, and that way is not a, a way that's laid out that you and I have to get ourselves into. It's a way that's complete, and that's finished, and that's done, and that same message is declared, and I, I, would, I would endeavor and believe in my heart that whether you were at a meeting uh, in North Carolina, or whether you were in a meeting in Kentucky, or whether you were in a meeting at, at, in Virginia, or, or whether it was in Southern Virginia or in Northern Virginia, uh, if the Lord was in the matter and blessing that meeting with his manifest presence, and blessing those that he's called to preach the gospel, you would have heard that same wonderful declaration of salvation by the grace and the mercy of Almighty God, and that the way is Jesus Christ and Christ alone, and that, that is a finished work. Uh, and it's all in one accord because it all came from the same Lord. It came from the same book that was written uh, by him and authored by him and given to us. Uh, yes, many men were used uh, in the writing of God's word, but aren't you thankful tonight that we don't uh, just have many books that we go to and uh, one church uses this book and another church uses that book or some other other thing. Even uh, even, if an, even in our hymn books, though we might use different books, every hymn we sing ought to be tried by this book, and that is the Word of God. And if it's not in line with God's Word, uh, then we ought to say no matter what book it's in, we don't need any part of that. But if it is in line with God's work, no matter what book it's in, uh, it's that which we ought to sing tonight. We heard that wonderful sound. Uh, once again sung, we sang the gospel. We spoke to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, and we made melody in our hearts unto the Lord. And that was the truth that was declared in song, and what a blessing it is to do that. It'll make a little sister in a nursing home who's having a real rough day have a better day. It'll make those that are heart sick and heartbroken. It'll help. It'll help the hungry and the poor and the maim and the halt and the blind. It'll, it'll encourage the little brother who's having a, a difficult time. And when we hear all of these uh, uh, sounds of difficult times and hard news and, and, and tough things, isn't it good tonight to know that we've got a God who's the same yesterday and today and forever, and that his salvation is secure uh, and done for all of his children, and that every one of them will receive every benefit uh, that he has there for them uh, in an eternal sense, and that there are blessings that he's given to us here in time, that as the Lord blesses us to walk in, 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 uh, in the Spirit, and lean upon him and trust in him. He's able to lift us up no matter how weak we feel, no matter how unready we might feel we were. You know, tonight when I, Brother Eddie called my name to come to speak to before you, I just felt like, oh boy, if I could just go hide somewhere. And yet I knew there's a responsibility and a duty that falls upon me that I didn't choose for myself. I didn't say one day, I think I ought to be a preacher. As a matter of fact, I felt when I was first felt that burden, so scared about it. And I wish I could tell you I feel better, but I feel just as scared tonight as I've ever felt. But I know this, the Lord is able to lift us up and he's able to give us a tongue of utterance. And he's able to open the windows of heaven and shower upon us tonight a blessing that we could not uh, hold all of the blessings that God has given us. And what we need to do is be on our knees looking to the Lord and saying each time we meet, Lord, if it is me that, that is to come before thee, don't let me have a spirit of fear. Let me come 
uh, trusting in the Lord, not a spirit of arrogance, not a spirit of boasting, but a spirit of humility, uh, looking to the Lord for what we stand in need of. So we, we, we might share what the Apostle Paul, I believe, desired to see uh, 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 Timothy, and, and he desired, he was mindful of his tears, and he was that he might be filled with joy. You know what made him filled with joy? He had some good news to tell. <laughs> Uh, he had he had something uh, to to declare to God's little children. He had something for the brokenhearted and for the poor and for the halt and for the ma the maimed. Uh, he had something for God's little lambs and God's little sheep. He had some sheep food that had been given unto him. As Peter was given that instruction, Lord, Peter, do you love me? And he said, oh, Lord, thou knowest all things. Do you love me more than these, Peter? Yes, oh, Lord, thou knowest thou lovest me. And he said, feed my lambs and feed my sheep, declare unto them oh, how great things the Lord hath done for thee and what the Lord has done in saving his people from their sins. Tonight, we ought not be ashamed of the gospel because there's nothing to be ashamed of. I hear a lot of gospels in this world. There's a lot to be ashamed of because it's not the real gospel. Uh, it's, a, it's called a gospel, but it's not really good news. The gospel of God's salvation tells us of a Lord who loved his people in covenant even before the foundation of the world. He knew them. He loved them. He foreknew them. He embraced them by his election and by his choice. Uh, and in that covenant, uh, there was God the Father and God the Son who willingly came at the command of the Father to save them uh, from their sins. And listen, he didn't. We ought not be ashamed of this gospel because uh, God didn't try to save somebody that he didn't get saved. Uh, God didn't try to deliver someone uh, that wouldn't let him deliver him. Uh, God didn't try to do anything. No, God came uh, in, in the person of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, yes, our God was made manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ became Emmanuel, uh, which being interpreted God with us, and he came for a purpose, and that was to save each and every one of his children from their sins. And the foundation of God standeth sure, and it has this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Isn't it good tonight that we can come and be agreed that God knows who his children are? You know, there are a lot of God's children tonight that are confused about that, that feel like God tries to save someone, that, but he's not really sure about the end result of all that. As a matter of fact, it's not really sure because it's still being done. It's still left up to the sinner. Uh, it's still left up to the one that uh, is out there, and the gospel would go out to them uh, to try to convince them to do something in order to seal the deal that the Lord has tried to do. First of all, the Lord didn't deal the Lord purpose. The Lord didn't try to do anything. Uh, he sent his son to do it, and when Jesus came and he cried out on the cross uh, in power, it is finished. He finished the work that the Father gave him to do, and what was that work? That work was to take the sin debt off of every one of his little children, out of every one of them that he loved, and that, there, that there's nothing that can separate from the, them from that love, uh, out of every one, from every one of them to take that sin debt off of them. And in the Father took that sin debt from off of them, and he placed them on his only begotten Son. And there is that ultimate sacrifice he offered himself once unto God, a perfect sacrifice for the sin of his people, and it's never going to be or needed to be offered again. Now listen, that, that, that sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary fulfilled all that the law pictured and pointed to in every animal sacrifice and all that was in the old law covenant, and Jesus fulfilled it. He, he crossed every uh, uh, he dotted every I and he crossed every T. He fulfilled it to a jot and to a tittle. Somebody would say, that's, my, that's a mighty big God. Yes, sir. That's a mighty big God. That's the one that we serve. That's the one that we preach about. Listen, a little God won't bring you joy. A little God would be a God you might be ashamed of. A little God would be one uh, that you might declare and say, uh, he's done all that he can do. And now it's up to a puny, little, weak, feeble man who can't do anything without uh, the grace of Almighty God. You know what you and I can do tonight without the Lord? Absolutely nothing. 
We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none of us that's good. No, not one. All of our righteousness, Isaiah tells us, are but his filthy rags. None of us have turned ourselves around to decide to serve him or follow after him. And if our efforts tonight was to try to convince anyone uh, that they need to turn their lives around, uh, it would be just as, 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 as much vanity as trying to tell an Ethiopian to change the color of his skin or a leopard to change his spots. Uh, because it's impossible for that to happen. But I'll tell you one, there's with, there's one. Uh, with God, all things are possible, and that is all things that he pleases to do. When he saw fit to save his people, he didn't have any problem to do it. And there legally at Calvary, he paid that sin debt for those that he had in covenant before the foundation of the world. Already they were eternally in a sense secure, but it required the blood of a perfect sacrifice and a perfect offering. And this is the gospel uh, that the apostle Paul was declaring unto them. And he was uh, wanting to share that with uh, uh, brother uh, Timothy and with, uh, with Lois and with Eunice uh, and all others of God's little children for the joy and the peace and the comfort that comes when we hear that gospel. I hope tonight it is as good a news to you tonight as the first time you heard it. As a matter of fact, I hope it sounds better than it's ever sounded before. I hope the songs sound sweeter than you've ever sung them before. I, I hope when you gather like this that the prayers are seen closer and you've seen closer to the Lord, uh, that we are growing in grace and knowledge of the truth, that we're uh, walking and, and, and that it would motivate you. Some people say, well, that kind of doctrine will cause men to walk away from God and walk in sin. I beg to differ. I'll tell you what it will do. It'll cause you to be so thankful that the God of heaven would love an old sinner like me. Love one that has no worth or no, or no ability uh, to gain for myself one measure of favor with him, but rather uh, his grace and his mercy was shown unto me uh, when I had no love for him. When I was yet his enemies, uh, Christ died for the ungodly. He didn't come to die for the godly. He came and died for the, and if he had, there would have been none he died for because without him, uh, there would be none godly. You know, great is the mystery of godliness. Tonight, it's a mystery there's anyone praising God. And I'll tell you what that mystery is. It's because a Savior loved them so much that he worked a work of grace in them. And he caused them to want things they would have never wanted. And to love things they would have never loved. And to hate things that they would have held on to no matter what. But God's grace worked in their hearts. And I believe tonight worked in your hearts to cause you to want to tune in even to a meeting like this, to hear one more time about the wonderful work of a finished Savior. And I believe if I would start declaring something else, uh, Brother Eddie would probably meet my button, and I hope he would, because I'm telling you someone ought to. But God forbid we give anyone the glory tonight but the Lord. Because it's the Lord who's given us the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the heart to under, understand. If the Lord had not worked in our lives, we'd be yet dead in our sins. If Jesus had not have died, we'd have no nothing to uh, think about in death but fear. But because he died, we can even face death itself without fear. Because he, came, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. Jesus didn't try to save. Jesus saved. Jesus is saving, and he yet will deliver us. He not only has delivered us, he is now delivering, and he will yet deliver us. That's the kind of God we serve. Not a weak God begging, pleading, uh, wanting to get things done he can't do, but a God who speaks and it stands fast. The God who spoke this world into existence. Oh, and I'm telling you tonight, when he, when it's, when he sees fit to call one of his little children effectually, by the way, he saves them before he calls them. <laughs> uh, but when he sees fit to call them, he saves them in another sense. He calls them in a, in a, in a sense. They, they, they have a phase of that salvation where they're brought to life and they're made to live. That which was dead uh, lives and he speaks life unto them. And someone said, well, how does that happen? Does the gospel do that? Some men believe that the gospel does that. But the Bible doesn't teach that the gospel does that. And what we're to preach tonight is the gospel uh, from the Bible. What does the Bible say about it? The Bible says that 
A life and immortality is brought to light through the gospel. It didn't say that it was given uh, by the gospel. It's brought to light. There's a whole lot of difference between shining a light on something and making it be there. I'm telling you what, what brings life. Uh, the Bible tells us the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. <laughs> it didn't say the voice of the preacher. It didn't say the voice of the Sunday school teacher. It didn't say the voice of mama. It didn't say the voice of daddy. It didn't say the voice of anyone else. It said the voice of the Son of God. And hear how effective that voice is. I'm telling you there's a call uh, that's effectual. And that effectual call will go out to whom? Every one of his little children that were chosen in him in love. Listen. They weren't just chosen any old way. Ephesians tells us they were chosen in him before the foundation of the world in love. They were embraced in the love of God. That's what foreknowledge is all about. God loved them. And the scripture says there's absolutely nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that's what the Apostle Paul said. I want to share with you, Timothy, that your joy, he said, that I may that I may be filled with joy. I believe it makes a preacher happy when he gets to preach this. I believe it makes those who hear it happy uh, because it declares Jesus Christ and him crucified as the way and, and, the, and the truth and the life. And there is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. And I like that word, must be saved. <laughs> Uh, that means every one of his little children will be called effectually. Now, he can reach a little baby in its mother's womb. Uh, he can reach that last brother, that, 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 little, that little brother or sister that's a little heir of promise if it's in his very last hour before he leaves this world. That's a big God, isn't it? Doesn't need a preacher to carry him around. Oh, preaching is important. Don't get me wrong. There's a reason for us to preach tonight. Uh, there's a reason for us to declare to God's little children this wonderful truth. But it isn't to make the dead alive. Uh, Jesus does that uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. We're quickened and made alive. And the, uh, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. They're born again. Just as the wind bloweth where it listeth. Uh, I'll tell you, we would, we would mute somebody tonight if they started talking about, I've got the control over the wind, wouldn't we? We'd shut them down. We wouldn't listen to that very long. I'm telling you, we don't have the control over the wind, but I know the one who brings it out of his treasuries, don't you? I know one who speaks, and, and you can't stop the wind from blowing on you. You can't say, I don't want that wind to blow. Uh, there have been men who thought they could build a house strong enough to stop the wind, uh, build a building strong enough to stop the wind. Uh, and I'm telling you, the Lord has shown in his power, even in nature, that when he, when he moves, none, when he moves, none can hinder. And I'm telling you that old hard-hearted Saul of Tarsus thought maybe in his own mind that he had the ability to do whatever. But when the Lord finished with him, the wind of grace blew in his life, and he knocked that man down flat. And when he, that one who was a persecuting Paul, Saul uh, went on his way as a praying, preaching Paul. What an unlikely character uh, to share the gospel. You know, I look at myself and think, oh, I'm an unlikely character. I look at some of my brethren. I've seen some preachers that didn't look like preachers. Uh, they didn't act like preachers in a sense. When I knew them, uh, they didn't. if I looked at their lives, I would say, that's the last man I'd ever call to preach the gospel. God, doesn't, God chooses the, the weak uh, to confound the wise. He chooses uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, he, he chooses the poor. Uh, he, he, God chooses whom he pleases. Isn't it good tonight to have a God who chooses whom he pleases? What an unlikely character. I've seen some men, when I saw them in the stand, I thought, well, what are we going to hear now? And then when the Lord opened the door, when the Lord opened the, opened the windows, I was made to just be ashamed for my thoughts. Oh, the preaching that has come from such unlikely characters. How the Lord has blessed them. Oh, I love it, though. Don't you? I, I love it when you're in a meeting and you can just feel the Lord in it. You can feel the Lord in the preaching. 
Feels like he's just come sit right down by you and held you in his arms. Said, you're mine, little child. Thou, thou, you belong, thou belongs to me. I loved you. Loved you so much, I sent this preacher. Though you may not have wanted to hurt him, I sent him uh, to declare unto you the good news of what the Lord has done for you and to let you know what you ought to be doing. So when you get off track and you get off this way or that way, or your mind gets a little confused and you forget that you stir up the gift that is in you, uh, and it's in you, it's the gift of God that's in you. Listen, uh, it isn't the gift of man that's in you, it's the gift of God. This is what he said. He said, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, because of this, he said, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Tonight I would stir you up if I could. You dear preacher brethren, I, I would want to I would want to stir you up to just to study more, to read more, to, to look more, and, and get in, uh, get uh, pray to God more. All of us, uh, which of us have studied enough? Which of us have read enough? Which of us have prayed enough? Listen, we all have that to grow in, and I have a lot of confidence, confidence that you brethren are right there are doing those things, but oh, if I could in any way stir us all up, that we would be con just convinced tonight of the importance. Listen, this isn't a waste of time tonight. This is an important gathering. This is a gathering of two or three of God's little children. We brought a lot of things tonight to the attention of this body that God already knew beforehand. He didn't need us uh, to pray about it in order for him to know about it, but it's pleasing to our Lord when God's little children gather in this capacity and they pray together and they sing together and they pray for one another and they're looking to the Lord of heaven. And I'll tell you of all the activities you could do in this world, there is none more important uh, than what we're doing right here tonight in worship God and talking about what the Lord has done. And there's nothing in this world that makes you as a little child of grace any more happier and many more at rest and any more than at peace than hearing these things once again, over and over again. And, and, if, and I believe you're like me tonight. It just gets sweeter and sweeter as the years roll by. And I remember as a young man what it meant to me the first time I heard it. What a rest came and a peace came and a joy came. But you know, it, the, it, it's still just as sweet. Now, I'm not sweet. I'm not like that every meeting. But I want it to be. See, I, I want to be stirred up. I don't want to, and, and listen, it's not just on Sunday that we ought to be stirred up. I, I'll, I need this tonight, but I'm going to need this when I get off of this meeting. I'm going to need it tomorrow. I'm going to need it when the trials and the troubles, uh, when I get out in the middle of that uh, that sea and I'm on, a, on that path that the Lord has led us to go and, and, and the storm starts coming and the trials come and the temptations come uh, and the winds blow and, and it gets real boisterous out there and, and we're just laboring and forgetting at times. We need to be stirred up to remember the Lord is right here with us and where is he? He's at hand. The Lord is nigh and at hand and he will never leave us nor forsake us. I believe that's what the apostle Paul wanted to tell that young preacher Timothy, uh, and he said, I, I want to put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, and he tells Tim Timothy to stir it up. There's some stirring that we need to do. This is some responsibility on our part. Now, how can we do that? Well, we can't do it on our own, and he goes on and he tells us that, that, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Now, the apostle Paul is not saying here that he made young Timothy a preacher. He said that young Timothy was a minister but because he'd had the gift of God. And Timothy, uh, and Paul tells us himself, he says, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. And how was he appointed an apostle? Verse 1 says he was an apostle of Jesus. Jesus Christ, how? By the will of God 
And it was according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. So that clarifies that. Uh, but the laying on of hands uh, was that, that which was done to recognize the gift that was given to him by Almighty God. That's all that we do in an ordination service today. When we ordain someone, we're recognizing a gift that was given unto them by Almighty God. And in, and in a sense, uh, giving acknowledgement to that gift that's been given uh, uh, so that that one might go about that calling that God had given, uh, given him uh, with church authority as he has instructed us in the word of God to do. It's all of the Lord, though. If the Lord didn't, then you can lay your hands on a man a, a hundred times and, and over and over again. If the Lord hadn't called him to preach, he won't preach. If the Lord hadn't appointed him, he won't, he won't be a benefit. And all the laying on the hands won't fix that or remedy that. But when one is called and we recognize that gift and we're told by the scripture uh, that we ought to set aside a time that we recognize that uh, to let, it, in a sense, let him go about that which God has called him to do with the with the with the, the approval of the Lord's church. He says, for God had not given us the spirit of fear. That is, there is a fear of the Lord. I read about that some today over in the book of Proverbs. There's a fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom. There's a fear of the Lord that we need in our lives. There's a fear of the Lord that causes us and helps us depart from evil. There's a respect. This is not a slavish fear. He hasn't given us the spirit of, of bondage, but he's given us the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That he's not given us a slavish fear, but as sons and daughters, we've been given a, a, a respect in our hearts to, of, to the Lord, where we fear him and reverence reverentially respect him. We reverence him. Holy and reverent is his name. And we're to honor him and recognize that. And he's not talking about that kind of fear here. He's talking about he hasn't given us a spirit of cowardice or a spirit of being timid or a spirit of wanting to go another course when the Lord has told us what to do. That comes out of the old flesh. He says he's not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power. A minister has power. When the Lord blesses him, he has the ability to, to speak things that are beneficial to God's little children. He has the ability to stand strong and stand firm and stand fast in the faith. He has the ability to declare the truth unto God's little children. And that spirit came from the Lord. He says we have that spirit of power. And yet we have also a, that same spirit as a spirit of love. A minister comes not only in the power of God, but in the love of God. He comes, he comes as the Lord leads him, trusting in the Lord to give him the ability to say what's needed and necessary, even in the face of, of those that would stand against him, or those that would stand opposed to him. And he's not to be afraid of man, but he's to walk in the fear and the reverence of God. And then he's to come not only in power, but also in love. He's, he's, not, he's not driving cattle. He's feeding lambs and feeding sheep. He's to be a gentle shepherd. He, he's to follow. And who set the example for that? Oh, the Lord set that example. I've heard some men at times and have been guilty of it myself say the right thing, but say it in such an un, uh, just such a wrong way that it scattered God's little children. Even though it was the truth, somebody uh, might think the truth can't, do that. But listen, we're to preach the truth in love. We're, to, we're delivered in love, but we're not to deliver it in weakness. We're not to deliver it apologetically. We're to deliver it in power. Uh, but they also in that power, we're to embrace the love. And where does that come from? Almighty God gives us that ability. He's given us the spirit of power and he's given the spirit of love. And he's given us, he says, and of a sound mind. I love that. Uh, there would be a lot of people that would think you're crazy uh, here tonight for even wanting to hear any of this, especially to hear it again and again and over and over. 
And I'm telling you, just like that wild Gadarean, when the Lord finished with him, he was seated and in his right mind, God's little children that are worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth are, are in their right mind. This is a sound mind tonight. When you and I talk about the gospel, we're talking about good things. We're talking about things that, uh, that are that are. Uh, that you can count on. It's a truth that will stand. Uh, it, it, it will stand no matter what the day is or the hour. Isn't it wonderful when you can read uh, uh, Old Testament passages that were written so long ago and they fit this very moment and this very hour better than something uh, that is was written right today. And as a matter of fact, I believe if it doesn't come from the word of God, it is, it's, it's of an unsound mind. Uh, when are we sound? It's when it's, when we're following a thus saith the Lord, when, we, when we're preaching the word and we're instant in season and out of season. He says, be, thou, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. I got on that early and didn't, didn't kind of, uh, we, we, if we had a gospel that wasn't a true gospel, we'd have reason to be ashamed of it. But I'm telling you tonight, what we have to preach, we don't have any reason to be ashamed of because the God who saved his people surely saved each and every one of them. And the God who has delivered us will deliver us today. And one sweet day, as we've already heard, he's coming again. There'll be a voice of the archangel and the trump of God and at that very moment, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we, which are alive and remain, are going to be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We'll be carried, we'll meet him in the clouds and we're going home. The Lord's coming again. And uh, this world is not going to last forever. And, and when he comes again, uh, he'll take care of this old, old earth. It'll melt. The, the elements will melt with a fervent heat. Uh, and we'll be uh, with the Lord in glory forever and ever. And at the moment of death, if that comes first for us, at the moment of death, we're to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's just as sure for every one of God's children as their eternal election, as their calling, as their justification, uh, their glorification is just that sure. And you know how many he's going to miss? Not one of them. Not one of them. I'm not ashamed of that gospel. God forbid I'd ever be. Now, when you preach that, there'll be some people that don't like it, don't want it, won't have it. But that's what we have to preach, and that's what we have to teach. And, oh, I'm thankful we have it, aren't you? I'm thankful that's what we sing. That's what we believe tonight. That's what we hold on to. And I don't want to hear anything else other than that truth. Now, the depths of that, Somebody said, well, that's kind of limited. Oh, yeah, the depths of that, how broad is that? How, how glorious is that? Uh, there's a height to that we'll never reach. There's a depth to that we can't get down to. Uh, there's a breadth to that and a length to that because it's the message of God's love. And God's love has a height and a depth and a breadth and a length uh, that is just unreachable, unsearchable riches of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, who has saved us? He says, let's get, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor me of his prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. There are some afflictions in the gospel. There, the apostle Paul, even as he spoke to young Timothy, was a prisoner of the Lord. He wrote as a prisoner of the Lord. And the reason he was in prison the reason he was there at Rome and uh, in prison there, uh, and the reason that he was there wasn't because he'd done something wrong. That's why I said, don't be ashamed of me, his prisoner, uh, because he was under persecution uh, for standing and declaring the truth. Didn't we see that? De didn't we see that persecution? Is it any wonder when we might face just a little bit of trouble, a trial here in this world? Sometimes we look at it and think, well, I've just got a hard road to hoe. Listen, compared to our brethren in the past, we have been so richly blessed to live in a land and a nation, even a night where we can gather like this without fear of anyone breaking down our doors and carrying us away. It has even not been that way always, even in this country, even in this nation. Some of our brethren suffered great 
ills in their body, ills in their family, hardships, loss of, of goods, and loss of, even loss of life to stand for this truth. But I believe it's a truth worth standing for. And I believe that it's the Lord who will give us the power to do it. He'll give us the love to do it. He'll give us the sound mind to do it. And he hasn't given us the spirit of cowardice or, tim or being timid or, or fear, uh, but he's given us all the things that we need. And we ought to be about our, fa our father's business. As he says, you be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. In other words, you preach the gospel. Come what may, joy or sorrow, be my portion, pain or death. May the Lord bless us to preach boldly the truth of Jesus Christ and him crucified to the comfort and edification of the Lord's people because he has saved us. And then somebody wonders, well, uh, how secure is our salvation? Well, the Bible says he saved us. <laughs> uh, the word of God says he saved us. Didn't say he tried to save you. Didn't say he'll save you if you'll let him. It says he saved us. Who? Every one of his elect children. And he called us. He saved us. Before he called us, he, he, we were already secure in the choice, in the election, in the predestination, but yet it took the legal act of him dying on the cross and he came and he saved us. Jesus came to save and he saved his people from their sins. What the angel told uh, Joseph and Mary was true. Jesus came and saved his people from their sins and he finished that work. And we're telling you about what they pointed to in the Old Testament. We're telling you about what is accomplished and finished tonight. He saved us and he called us and he called us with a holy call. He called us effectually. And every one of us uh, that have been born of the spirit have been called effectually by the by the power of Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ has taken up his abode in our hearts. And it was not according to our works. That sure takes works and knocks it right, uh, right where it belongs. It's not according to our works. That's, you can't get any plain. Not according to our works. But then if it's not according to our works, what is it according to? Get this. But it's according to his own purpose. Isn't it good to have a God tonight who does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and everything he does, he does well, and everything he does is right and righteous and good. Uh, we can't praise him enough for his goodness and his grace and his mercy that's been shown unto us, the children of men. What a blessing. He says, and grace which was given us. When was that given us? It was given us in Christ Jesus. When? Before the world began. <laughs> oh, my. He says, but it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't it good tonight to say he's already come? He's come one time, but he's coming again. But he's already come, and he finished the work that the Father gave him to do. And there's an empty, if there's an empty tomb to prove it. There's a resurrected Savior seated on the right hand of the Father. The sweet prayer offered by Brother Joe tonight was offered because the Holy Spirit moved in his heart and gave him a tongue to be able to speak those wonderful words. And then those words were heard because there's a Savior seated on the right hand of the Father, uh, making intercession that our prayers might be offered. And then it was a, uh, then we can uh, be, be at peace tonight that the Lord, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask and think, have heard our prayers tonight. And we can be at peace about all the things uh, that would trouble us otherwise. Now, all of that's because he came and because he died and because he rose again. And it's done by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death. He's abolished it. That's good news tonight. That's why the Apostle Paul wrote later, uh, he said uh, earlier, he said, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Because Jesus has taken, taken care of that. Be a fearful thing. For God's little children, death is not a fearful thing when the Lord blesses us to see it. I know the old flesh doesn't like that, doesn't even like to think about it. But I'll tell you, it's a wonderful thing tonight to think about being absent from the body. When you get the other part to be pleasant, pre to be present with the Lord, which is not just a little better, but the apostle Paul said, which is far better. It's far better. And I don't believe we can even see right now how far better it's going to be. 
<laughs> but but what I can see through a glass darkly sure looks good. Thanks and praise be given unto the Lord. He says, who had brought life, and he says, who will abolish death, and he's brought life and immortality. That which he's given, life and immortality, he's brought it to light. That's what the gospel does. The gospel shines the light of the truth so that God's little children might see how great things the Lord has done for them. And there's a salvation in that. There's a deliverance in that. It doesn't get us to heaven in immortal glory, but we're delivered here in time where we're given peace in our hearts and in our souls and in our minds. And we're taught how we ought to live and act and talk and behave with one another so that we might have joy and peace while we're living here in this world. And that's a salvation that's so sweet and precious for God's little children. It's a now salvation. It's a gospel salvation. It's a salvation that's here in time right now. And so many of even God's little children fail to see that wonderful truth and get all confused about so many passages of scripture that are pointing to that timely deliverance that comes in the gospel. That's why the gospel is important, so that God's little children might see and know how great a Savior we truly serve, that we might be about our Father's business, that we'd stir up the gift of God that's in us by the grace and the mercy of God. He says, whereunto, that is to that gospel, I am appointed, a preacher. And every gospel God called minister is appointed to that very thing. Preach the gospel. Preach the word. Preach it in love. Preach it in, in power. How can we do that? By the, by the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. He says that in verse 8, and I meant, I meant to mention that. He says, according to the power of God. In other words, if you leave the power of God out of this, there is no power source. God is the power. God is the power in the preaching. God is the, the one who gives us the ability to love one another. If you're trying to love God's children on your own, you'll never be able to do it right. We have to look to the Lord for the love that we need to love one another the way we ought to. We have to look to the Lord for the love, uh, for the power that we need in our preaching. We have to look to the Lord for our sound mind. If we think we can get it all figured out in our own mind without the Lord, we are mixed up. It comes from the Lord. He said that in verse 8, according to the power of God. That's how we're able to endure the hardships and the troubles and, and experience the joy and the peace of, of, the, of the fellowship of the brethren while we live here in this world. He says, whereunto I'm appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. A preacher is a teacher, and a teacher is a preacher. <laughs> I'll tell you, that, and that all comes from the Lord. It's, it's the Lord. It's the Lord who gives us this understanding. But he, he's blessed us to have ministers called of God and qualified of God and then blessed of God to teach and preach his wonderful truth. May we always do it in such a way that we point to the Lord as the source and give him every bit of the honor and the praise and the glory. I do appreciate tonight your kind attention. When you have a mind to pray, remember me, and God bless you, and we love you all. Love you as well, Elder Oots. We're thankful for that. Um, it is a did stir me up to, uh, to read more, to pray more to learn more about what you were speaking about. Uh, so we're thankful for that. Um, we hope and trust that uh, the Lord would continue to bless us. Uh, whoever's called on to speak, would the Lord would stir them up. And uh, we hope and trust in that, in that power. Um, have wonderful news. Uh, Brother Gary's done taught us about a lot of good news. Uh, we prayed for Brother Bob as he went into surgery. I got a message and it said that he's out of surgery. And it seemed that the, uh, the surgeons found what the issue was and they were able to fix it and that he's feeling better. And uh, we hope and trust that uh, Brother Bob will have a complete recovery now. So thank God for that. Um, so uh, good news all around this evening. 
Uh, we're thankful for everyone that's in attendance. Uh, Brother Kevin, what number do you have? Brother Eddie, we've turned to He Shall Save His People. It's number 176 and I believe 272 in the 12th edition. 176 and 272. Jesus is name it shall be called the hurricane opportunity that we've had to meet together. Uh, we hope and trust that all things are pleasing to the Lord. We believe they were because they came from the word of God uh, and uh, given to us uh, in that spirit. Be in prayer for your upcoming meetings, dearly beloved. Uh, let us not take it for granted. Uh, it is a it's a special, it's a special thing that we have that we're able to meet. So be thankful for it and be grateful as we uh, are able to uh, come together in person. Does anyone have any other announcements? All righty. Uh, Brother Don, if you would, please, uh, would you close us with prayer? Let's bow our heads, if you will, please. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank thee, O God, for this night. We thank thee, O God, for all the blessings of life that you've blessed us with down through our lifetime. Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for this good meeting tonight and for blessing Brother Gary to preach the gospel, to preach the unsearchable riches of thy kingdom, Lord. It's always good, Lord to hear the finished work of Christ preached into in, in our, our hearts and our souls. Lord, deliver us from the evils of this world. Bless the sick and the afflicted and those that have asked for prayer and help, Lord. Forget them not, O oh God. Lay thy healing hand upon them. Bless the church, O oh God, everywhere. And please, Lord, bless the old Baptist people that we might be able to keep our churches and, and add to them daily, Lord, should, should, be, should, should be saved. Deliver us, guide us, and keep us in the way that we should go. These blessings and favors we ask, dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of thy darling Son, Jesus Christ. And amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Brother Don. It's good to see y'all tonight. Brother Gary, good to see you. Good to hear you. Appreciate you. Good to fellowship with us, with you. Elder Miller, God bless you. And uh, Reese, God bless you too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I apologize for getting on a little late tonight. The time goes by so fast sometimes that I forget what time it is. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. It's good to see you, though. Yeah. yeah. Love you, Brother Gary. Brother love Bill. You. Brother love Eden, you. all of you. Love all of you. Good to see you again tonight. Love you. Love you. Thank, thank the Lord for the whole good meeting. Yeah. Brother Ned, good to see you over there, too. Yeah, Brother Ned, good to see you, old buddy. God Amen. bless you all. Hope to see you again. Amen. God bless you until we meet again. God bless That's you, right. Brother Don. That's right. Bye -bye. Take care. Stay very good to see you. All of us. Hope to see many of you Sunday. God bless y'all. Love you all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. God bless you. Love you all. Love you, Brother Ned. God bless. God bless you, Brother Gary, and Brother Eddie, and Brother Joe. I was going to speak to Brother Don, but uh, I believe he got off. Brother Russ, I see you Did there. It, Brother Ned. Yeah. <laughs> All of you, good, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.